And here's a pretty cool device. Tracky. So it's an LTE Wi-Fi GPS uh, you know, tracker. Uh, it's only about 47 millimeters long, which is like pretty impressive if you're trying to get LTE where you know the lowest uh, wavelength is, you know, the half wavelength is what, seven inches? Um, so yeah, so I want to take a look at this guy, uh, measure up the antennas. Yeah, so if we open this guy up, and it screws in the back, pull out the battery, and I already started taking it apart, but um, inside here, actually, there's four antennas. Um, so they have, looks like, uh, GPS uh, over here. They have a nice little, you know, it's like an EFA or PIFA, whatever you want to call it. Um, on the other side, the spring hits off on the cellular antenna and then they have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on, on the side. So you have in here, they put a uh, cellular antenna up here and then uh, Wi-Fi over here. And on the other side, little, you know, flex, which is a flexible PCB for well, Wi-Fi here and Bluetooth here. So cellular, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, all in this little package. So let's see how it does. Okay, so open it up. Right there is a conducted port, uh, which is where you test the radio chips at. It's a great place to put a cable for an antenna. So I remove that, put in a cable, cable it up, and then uh, put it all back together. And then we can hook it up and measure it on a BNA and in an anechoic chamber. Uh, quick note, it is not ideal to have a cable that runs out the side like this, because it kind of extends the length. Um, so you keep the cable, you know, it's thin and it goes out the side. So there's still a larger ground plane that the RF current will prefer to flow on. Um, so I do take care to check, you know, if the cable is influencing the result in the measurement, because that's critical when you're measuring small antennas and it doesn't have a big impact, but that is a small source of error in the data. So let's check out the VSWR. Okay, so I'm plotting the VSWR here. Uh, from 700 megahertz to 3 gigahertz. So first the low band, and what I mean there is under 1 gigahertz. There's two bands, band 17, which is LTE, and band 5, also uh, GSM 850, so that's like 2G and 4G. Uh, so the first is this very narrow band. Uh, you know, within the actual bands of interest, uh, VSWR is very high. We're talking, you know, 5 for band 17, and uh, 7 to 11 or higher for band 5, so very poorly matched antenna, so very high VSWR, and this is just due to the fact that they have a very small device, uh, you know, you just cannot have good bandwidth. Phones are much larger, and even those, um, you know, have adaptive switching, so you can move this response as a function of what band you're on. Uh, Tracky, you know, this is a fairly cheap product, so they uh, didn't do that. Uh, and the penalty is they lose a lot of uh, mismatch, um, a lot of accuracy there, but, you know, still uh, works good enough, I suppose. Uh, then 1700 to 2100 megahertz, you have band 4 and band 2 to some 3G, 4G, 2G stuff, also known as like GSM 1800. Um, and then band 7, which is just above Wi-Fi at uh, 2.5 to 2.7 gigahertz. So they cover all these, not well, uh, but they, uh, you know, the antenna does technically work. And so uh, how do I know which bands they use? I just go to, you know, I look up the FCC ID on the product, find that, and then you can go to FCC.gov and type that in, and then they have to certify uh, to sell in the U.S. And so I can see what all frequencies they uh, say they're covering. Um, so it's not a great antenna, but um, you know, at least in my experience, it, it worked fairly well, surprisingly well. <laughs> um, so next we can look at, I measured the efficiency. Um, that's one of the most important antenna parameters, um, how efficient it is. Link in the description if you want to learn more about antenna efficiency. But uh, band 17, you're at about minus 8, minus 9 dB. That's a bit more than 10%. Uh, band 5 is even worse, again, mainly due to mismatch. And again, the antenna here is just very small relative to a wavelength, so very small bandwidth. Uh, you can see they split the difference there and just tuned for the center of band 17 and band 5, so they're both kind of equally bad. Um, band 5, you know, below 
10% efficiency, so it's minus 12 dB. And then the higher you go in frequency, the band four and band two, band seven, a lot, uh, you know, a lot more bandwidth there. So instead of like, you know, talking 100, 200 megahertz, we're talking like 400, 500 megahertz here, and they get minus seven dB uh, for band four and band two, and band seven about minus 10. Um, so overall, you know, not a good antenna. You wouldn't be super proud if you did this, but uh, it actually works fairly well. Okay, so I didn't analyze all the antennas, but uh, finally to close out, see, so yeah, I can pull out, just pulling out their uh, antenna here. So I scraped away some of it. You see, I spelled main wrong. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so there's only a single point of contact. Uh, so the spring from the uh, their logic board there hits off on that. And so this is just a meandered uh, dipole, basically. So it comes up all the way around there, loops all the way back around, and uh, comes down there. So it's not connected. It's not a loop. It's just a, pretty much a meandered dipole. Um, kind of cool. Fairly straightforward. And then the impedance matched it. And uh, the result is what you see. Uh, for more information, uh, check out antennatheory.com.